that created the most conflict and therefore growth would have been Nadine Ross, right? This ex-paramilitary leader of Shoreline. Yeah. I mean, and the personalities are couldn't be further apart. You have the enigmatic Chloe Fraser, hustler, wheeling, dealing, always backing out when it gets too tough. And right. The pragmatic, militant leader, Nadine Ross. It was perfect. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When, you, when I first read that, I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Chloe is, like, <laughs> impulsive, <laughs> and Nadine is so, like, calm and collected. Yeah. I was like, Keep and on. we're going to talk about teamwork, yeah. and they're going to solve <laughs> this adventure together? Are we sure that's going to work out? Yeah, that's it. That's exactly the question. Yeah. Right, right. So another thing we saw in that trailer is you got re revealed who the villain is in the game. And it's somebody that a lot of people might not have known about. I think Die Hard Uncharted fans might know who this is. Could you explain who that is, though? The, the villain? The villain. Uh, well, the villain's Asav. Asav is this insurgent leader um, who's basically, you know, creating turmoil in India right now. And he also has entitlement to these lands, at least he thinks he does. Um, he has, there's two factions of the old empire, the old kings and the new king, which was a more progressive king. Uh, and Usman, uh, who plays the character Asav, he's an amazing actor, uh, did a really good job of bringing Asav to life, which is, he believes in the old king. He believes in the purification of this, uh, this establishment and wanting to gain back these lands for himself. Right. Right, these zealots, man, I swear, they just, <laughs> they just want <laughs> everything to be their way. Right. All right, so, and that eventually forces Chloe and Nadine to join forces, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're after the, the Tusk of Ganesh, which is, uh, you know, we always base our Uncharted on some uh, seed of, you know, history. So the Hoysala Empire, which is a real uh, thing, and we take our, we Unchartedify uh, you know, the <laughs> ruins and uh, bring a little... You know, some of the, there's like such a rich cultural history in India and we blow it up to, you know, to 11, uh, you know, these giant statues of Ganesh that you uh, see in the trailer. And um, it, so the setting just is, everything Uncharted is there. And we have, you know, the, the Jeep is back, Chloe's the best driver in the business. So she's there and we're pushing on exploration a little more in, uh, in this game, kind of evolving it from the past games and just providing more player choice throughout and uh, nice yeah other than the statues of Ganesh are you guys going to get into any Hindu mythology given like the vastness of that situation uh, well these are archaeological sites I have to say this right because <laughs> uh, that's true we, we these are ruins of the great Hosala Empire right uh, and we did a lot of research for um, to ensure that we you know respect the you know the religion there are thousands of people hundreds of thousands of people if not millions that still practice uh, Hinduism avidly daily. So we wanted to approach this thing with respect, reverence, but at and the same time in context of a game. So a lot of these archaeological sites are based on the Hosala people and their empire. And the story of the Tusk of the Nash and how he lost his text, lost his tusk, which they talk about in the trailer, that kind of thread, uh, that is like from a real text in, in Hinduism. So there's like, it's we've taken it and made it as the base of our of our story. Yeah. Right. I really like how you guys always dig in to the intricate history of these settings and of these cultures before you implement them into the games. It's always astounding to me. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the fact that this is the first Uncharted expansion, standalone expansion, in history. You guys have never really done anything like this. What led you to this point right here? Well, we explored many storylines. After we finished the Nathan Drake story, Right. We were done with Nathan Drake. <laughs> we were done. We were done. Oh. We wrapped it up. Broke her heart. Right. Broke her heart. Right. Man. My boyfriend's gone. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> no, I'm very excited for this one. Yeah. Well, we we explored many different because we have such a vast uh, cast to, to to pull from. We went down a few different storylines. Uh, we went through the, the Sull Sullivan storyline. The even Cutter came back up. Yeah. Um, and we were messing we around. We want to talk about that. <laughs> I, we want to talk more about Cutter before. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're going to. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the Chloe story just kept jumping back out at us. It was, you know, she's such a self-preservationist. She's, you know, always, like, bailing out at the last minute. Right. You know, and she was just an intriguing survivor. character. Exactly. Yeah. She's a survivor. And uh, we wanted to see how, you know, just putting her up with someone like Nadine, if Chloe was the showrunner, if this was her job, right. how would she fare? What would she stand to lose now that she has everything to lose? Right. Would she, would she go all the distance? Would she complete the task. So these were the questions we started with that led to a lot right. of things.
you know, that's the one similarity I can see between the both of them. Is they're both kind of survivors. I kind of got that vibe from Nadine in Uncharted 4, yeah. the way she was. She, you could tell she really didn't like Wraith, but she was working with them because yeah. it was for her betterment, you know? Of course. And it was kind of the same thing with Chloe and Drake in Uncharted 2, so I really like that. Yeah. All right, so, you know, I'm a big uh, multiplayer fan. Uh -huh. uh, Kurt, you know this. <laughs> you know this more than anybody. I love, I love the Uncharted multiplayer. Will there be any tie-ins? of any sort uh, from the game? So yeah, the so Lost Legacy comes with the entire multiplayer suite of Uncharted, We're kind of unifying the multiplayer. So both Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy have the same multiplayer. So you get everything nice. with uh, all the DLCs you release, all the survival mode, the co-op, uh, and then, yeah. So all the DLC they've done, and then we're going to have some Lost Legacy content in the future that we'll be talking about soon. That is, <laughs> that is, that is so great. great. Uh, how was it kind of taking this different path as far as narrative goes. You know, you had this wise crack in, very clever, witty, Nathan Drake, and now you have like a completely different personality in the driver's seat. How was it kind of changing gears on that? Uh, I mean, the, we built the game around Chloe. So, yeah. you know, the tone of the game reflects her, her, her state of mind and where she goes, the arc that we're, we're gonna be pushing. Uh, it's a little grounded, a little more grounded, uh, maybe even darker at times, but it's still fun, still yeah. has that sense of wonder Chloe, and Chloe adventure. In, in, in the end, is a fun character. Yes, yes. Right. that's why we like her. Yes. So she fits the Uncharted. You know, the main character being a fun character is an Uncharted thing. So right. it fits right in. Now I gotta ask, since Chloe is there, does that mean there's gonna be a lot more driving in this one? Because I gotta say, <laughs> in Uncharted 4, I didn't do so well with those driving scenes. <laughs> we uh, there's there is driving. There's more driving. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Uh, <laughs> you, you really don't like driving sequences. I, I do, know this. I do I not know like this. driving sequences. You guys are trolling Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, there's parts, yeah. We're trying to provide a lot of different options to the player. So, yeah, there's parts where we drive, but there's also, you know, a lot of encounters you can engage or not engage with. We have a lot more stealth options and nice. silence silence weapons. And the lock picking is a... Silence weapons, that's, that's kind of new, right? Yeah. So yeah, you can lock pick lock and is new as well. Nice. Open a crate. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So. It's 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 literally the sum of all our Uncharted. We're building on on the foundations that we have and, and known all throughout Uncharted. We have big set pieces. We climb and, and traverse like enormous statues and ruins of ancient civilization. So the sense of wonder is there. We also went back to the scale factor that people loved of the old Uncharted as well. Yeah. So right. And there's all a lot right. of puzzles yes. too. Gotta have puzzles. We we gotta have those. puzzles. Gotta have those. All right, I got one more quick question. Because at the end of uh, Uncharted 4, I was asking myself, uh, where's Chloe at? And now she's here. So now my question is, where's Charlie? Where's, where's Cutter? Charlie. Yeah. Yes, oh, Charlie, Charlie Cutter. Cutter. Where's Charlie Cutter? I love Charlie Cutter. Are you going to make maybe a little appearance? I mean, I know they have a little something going in Uncharted 3, <laughs> so. <laughs> Any chance? theories right over here. I would say that this story is about Nadine and Chloe. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, but you never know, right? In another life. Maybe, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys at least mentioned him in the Charter 4. That felt good. That felt good. Well, anyways, thank you very much, Sean and Kurt, for your time. And Meredith, for joining us. Absolutely. And, uh, thank on you. that note, we're going to go ahead and uh, get ready for our next segment. We've got lots more coming here to PlayStation Live from E3, so stay tuned. PlayStation.